Hello everyone, Def Camp here, and welcome to another episode of Def Talk, the talk show that focuses on everything World of Warcraft, whether it's retail, classic, or the players to play it. Today we have with us, of course, the one and only Meldron. Hello everyone. And our very special guest, I am really excited for this one, we have Josh from Countdown to Classic, everybody. What's up, Josh? How you doing? Hey guys, how you going? How's things? Thanks for having me. Oh, we are so excited to have you, man. Yeah, uh, very excited. Gotta say, before we even start, your podcast, your show is an inspiration to Mulderon and I. You do an amazing job over there in Countdown the Classic, and we've been really wanting to have you on this show for a long time, so thank you for coming. No, no, thank you. I, I appreciate that. Um, you know, it, it's been nice to have uh, contact with you guys over the last few weeks. I've really enjoyed talking with you, and I was flattered to, to get this invitation. So I'm ready. I'm ready to talk a lot of shop. All right, let's do it. Let's start off where we start off with everyone, right? So how and when were you introduced to World of Warcraft? So uh, we've had this chat a couple of times before, but obviously a lot of the listeners aren't aware. Um, I, I believe that the three of us jumped in around about roughly the same time. I was, we, we've, we've made the joke about the patch 1.9 babies, and yeah. I, I very much so, I couldn't pinpoint the day. I'm really impressed by a lot of people, a lot of my listeners who can rattle off the day, like by heart. Um, I don't, uh, I don't have access to my old account, but I know that it was uh, somewhere in the bounds of that one, those 1 1.9 days. So I'm going to say it was around like March, April, 06. Um, no, wait, sorry. Oh, five or 06. It was 06. Yeah. That's I, right. You know, I, I just know I was in my senior year of high school. That's all I can no, remember. No. No, because yeah. March 05 was like 1.3. It was definitely 06. I remember I had a I girlfriend right, at the yeah. time. We started, yeah. yeah, we started dating in 06. It was 06, definitely. Yeah, I graduated 06, so that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So, when you first started playing, uh, how were you introduced to it? So, I knew about it. Um, it's It's a funny one because... I knew about World of Warcraft, but I wasn't interested in diving in, obviously, for quite some time. I let the game pass by for about 15 months before I, I got involved, or, um, or a year and a half. And I'd had friends whisper it to me, like, oh, dude, I loved Warcraft 3, you got to check out World of Warcraft. And I'd heard about it through the development, but I, weirdly, I don't know why, well, actually, I do know why. I was going through law school at the time, and I didn't want to get too caught up in something that I knew would absorb my life. And I'm a big gamer. I was playing games on the side anyway. I was still running through all my Final Fantasies, all my console stuff. I'm, I'm a console gamer. I'm, uh, you know, I love that kind of stuff. And I just thought if I jump into an MMO when I'm trying to learn about some pretty full on stuff that, I mean, you know, I was a party guy. I drank a lot through law school as well. Yeah. I was like, I just can't afford to bring another element in that would draw me away from somehow <laughs> falling over the line with my degree. So I stayed away. But one day I was in, uh, you know, like a GameStop. I was shopping for a console game. I forget what I was looking for, but um, might have been like one of the latest. Again, like I'm a big Final Fantasy fan. Might have been one of the latest Final Fantasies. And I just saw WoW sitting there and it was on sale. And it was like, you know, WoW reduced 20 bucks. Get involved. And I was like, oh, screw it all right i'll just do it and I, I i'll never forget firing it up and just you know everything changing i was just fell in love straight away dropped out of school lost your girlfriend um became a full-blown world of warcraft addict right somehow maintained the girlfriend and somehow got through law school so oh, yeah man. it all worked out in the end good for you that yeah. is awesome that's that is good awesome. to hear so i have to interject real quick so i'm sorry yeah. go ahead josh go ahead I was going to say the girlfriend's not around anymore, but uh, that was wow wasn't the reason that uh, okay. anything bad happened there. Well, that's good. So I have to interject real quick. I'm also a huge Final Fantasy fantasy fan. What was your favorite uh, title? We literally did a stream on this yesterday. I, I sat around um, uh, with um, basically another player doing their first run through of Final Fantasy IX. Um, it's actually my new girlfriend who was doing this, and uh, she's a big Final Fantasy fan. And we played through nine because that's my favorite. Wow. Um, okay. And, you know, it's it's a tough decision. It's one of those things that I love about the Final Fantasy series that every entry has people arguing for it, saying it's the best. And I yes. think it's the subjective nature of it that makes it so great. Um, kind of like classes in WoW, how every class has a great number of advocates saying it's number one. And yeah. uh, it, it's all in the eye of the beholder. I agree. I think it's because the, uh, Final Fantasy, this, the franchise does a clean slate every title, and they have a new story, new characters, mm. new new world, new mm. universe, kind mm. of new universe. But I think that's really interesting. So for me, it's like seven and nine are like right neck and neck yeah. for me. Oh, oh, that's, uh, yeah. Same same for me, yeah. Yeah. 
Sorry, go back, go back to Warcraft. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so when you first started playing Josh, what was your first character and what was your allegiance? And is it still so, what? Yes, unfortunately, I, I I sort of hang my head in shame. Apparently, I know uh, some people feel this way. I was Alliance. I was a Night Elf Rogue. Um, you know, I, I there you so, go. Yeah, yeah, I I gravitate towards you know the 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 nicer characters, the nicer factions. I like to feel like I'm doing good deeds at the end of the day. And <laughs> know you know, you, you play games like Fable and stuff. I could never bring myself to turn my character really evil. I always yeah. wanted to do the nice. That's work. how you know you're a lawyer. Sorry. <laughs> Well, yeah, yeah, no, it, it, it's actually, it's contrary to people be like, dude, you're a, you're a lawyer, you should be the evil guys, and it should, uh, it should feel really natural, but no, it doesn't, I'm actually, I feel the other way, but anyway, I played a Night Elf Rogue, um, I loved it, and uh, the one major difference, well, I, I know some people are like this, but we're definitely a minority, the one major difference between me and other World of Warcraft players was that I really only focused on that one character. I didn't run alts. I mean, don't get me wrong. Of course, I was curious about trying other classes and I did that, but I would only dabble and get them to like 10, 20, which is why I, I just, I didn't have the time basically to really focus on anything but my main. And um, that's something I'd really love to change when classic comes around, but that's right. what I started with. I can relate to that. Cause my first character was also a night elf rogue and, um, in the beginning, I had made him, and in vanilla, like, my focus was just on him. I had made some other classes that I leveled up, like, like t I think 20 was the max. And Melderon did this as well, had a lot of level 20s. Um, but when I first started playing, I was so enveloped in that one character that it was just him, and, and that was it. And it wasn't until the Burning Crusade that I made my first switch, actually, from... Uh, the rogue to my priest and that's when my main became my priest but i was you know one of the guys and i think it is also being you know was this your first mmo as well it actually wasn't um which is even stranger that i took so long to get on to world of warcraft right. i played final fantasy 11 first and um you know we look back on the days of dial up and all that stuff and i don't know quite frankly i don't know how we did it but um i really liked final fantasy 11 but i never got to sort of get that far in the game but it still to this day has mechanics that i really really like and i often say uh, you know it's not something i'd like introduced to wow um but if blizzard were ever to do another mmo there are certain things from final fantasy 11 that i wouldn't hate seeing in a blizzard mmo i think they hit on a couple of things really well but yes that was my previous mmo experience outside of that basically nothing i didn't do the eq stuff i, I played like the, a free trial of eq I, I didn't get into it i was a little bit sort of you know i was 16 at the time i was focused on other things um and uh yeah that's about it so yeah i mean that's how i was i made my first character it was my first MMO, Melderons 2, and it was like anything else outside of that one character would have just been too much for me to handle. I think having that one character was enough for me. That This new world to explore, never have playing an MMO, never, not knowing what to expect, and uh, I really put I put a lot of time into that character. I mean, even though I was like 17 and doing other things at that time, you know, when I came home at night and I was playing my, my Rogue, it definitely became... Uh, over time, especially when things became a little bit different in my life, my main focus. But um, so what was your favorite race? Is that still, do you still play Night Elf or? No, I mean, I, I love the design of the Night Elves. Um, and to be honest with you, I'll always have a very um, soft spot in my heart um, for, you know, that whole, just the look and feel um, of the race, but also Darnassus. I, I love the 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 epic feeling of walking through the gates of Darnassus and having everything open air sprawled out and the music I, I love it but my favorite race is actually the Forsaken um, nice. Nice. whenever I whenever I do like I said if I just start these characters that I only get to about ten or twenty I often find myself doing that more often than not with the Forsaken and I really really love I, I know it's pretty universally accepted that their starting area is yeah. probably the best in the game yeah I um, agree. going through tiras four glades that that road to brill getting to brill brill is is my favorite small town in the game i love it none. um and and just uh, again the design and everything it's it, i'm you know a broken record with a lot of people with this one it's forsaken easily 
That's awesome. So are you a fan of the lore? Because the, for, for us, and I know for myself, the lore of the Forsaken is what really gets me. So is, is lore something that you uh, like to delve into? It is. And obviously on the show, I, I do a, a lot of the lore um, every now and again. And it's something that a lot of people presume that because I focus on the law so much on the show that I must know this law. I actually don't. The reason I'm doing it is to teach myself. I was always interested in the law and I found myself reading all these, um, you know, wiki entries late at night going, wow, this is really cool stuff and wishing I could know more and more. And, and just when I was bored, I just find myself just uh, watching YouTube videos about the backstory of, you know, someone like Sylvanas, the backstory of different areas of the game and the, the problem was that the information wasn't retaining. I was kind of half paying attention when I was going through this stuff. And I just thought when Classic was announced, I'm not, I, real, I realized that there's a group uh, of players who obviously are fanatical about the lore and that's fantastic. I wouldn't say I'm going to quite get to that level where I'm just like reciting lore like it's the lore, L-A-W, like I can do at times in real life. But I, I want to get to the point that I know what's going on when I get to areas where right. I know the backstory and I know what's pushing my character forward, not to the point that I have to know all the specifics, but just a general, oh yeah, I know what happened here and, and why I'm doing what I'm doing. That, yeah. that makes the game a bit more involving for me. It yeah. really does. It, it makes you feel like you're actually playing, you know, and you're inside this world that is not just a character doing a quest, getting heads or doing this. It's actually a story being told. And I think when you Absolutely. look at it like that, it makes the game feel a lot more alive. Yeah, and I think what makes Tears Fall Glade so special is that you have the heavy-handed lore, like you have the Arthur storyline that everyone knows, right? But what makes that area, Brill, Tears Fall Glade, so special to me is that you get the story of these normal people that were doing this life, and then that life was taken away from them. Mm. And you have, you know, I was a butcher in life, or I worked in Agamemnon Mills, I, I you know... I did this, and you and you feel for the characters. I think a lot more in Tears Fall Glades than you do in anywhere else in the game. That's my personal opinion, and I think that's mm. yeah. Oh, absolutely. The whole area of Lordaeron, I think you know, given with what we got in the campaign of Warcraft Three, it it's we all know about it, but I don't think a lot of us really appreciate how significant the area is in terms of what it used to be. We yeah. just see it as it is now. Oh, yeah, the Plague Lands, all that jazz, Tears Fall Glades. Okay, yeah, we get it. Humans used to be here, blah, 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 en masse. But, um, you know, it was a thriving, I don't want to say like a civilization, but a different culture was that was decimated and wiped off, off the, the face of that continent in a way. I guess they went to different areas. But um, it's fascinating, that whole backstory. And I love it. That's why Lord on that sort of, upper tip of um the eastern kingdoms that whole area is just every zone i go to is like wow this you you're walking down the path that these characters that you've heard about walked and uh, i don't know it's kind of fun so let me ask you with that being said with the forsaken being your favorite race how do you feel with the new um progression where they're going in bfa with the alliance retaking water on i mean the story has to progress do you know what i mean that yeah. at the end of the day they're creative writers they have to push the law forward in some way and if that means sort of you know coming full circle like to go full like you know circle of life all that jazz and yeah okay lord Ron's being retaken by the alliance if that's the direction blizzard has chosen to go in so be it i don't think that uh it's something that is outside of the scope of of creative license it's yeah. is it cliche is it you know old hat Maybe, but I think it will be interesting if we get a scenario where they just muscle back in there. And it's kind of like a you're getting boat. You get you're also losing Darnassus as well in BFA because oh, is that Shoals right? Being, yeah, it's it, Temple Shoals being completely destroyed. It's being burned down. Oh, I did not know that. Yeah. So you're you're really <laughs> getting <it> uh... Darnassus. <laughs> And I don't know if you guys had listened to the new uh, Before the Storm. Like, you know, I like to a little bit of, keep up a little bit on the lore of BFA, but there was this really cool, if you guys, um, you know, want to check it out or not, there's this really cool occurrence that happens in, in the backstory before BFA where some of the Forsaken of Lordaeron uh, agree with um, to meet up with some of their real-life relatives that live in Stormwind, and they actually meet up on the plains really? of Rocky Highland. Yeah. 
Do and, the relatives uh, say to them when they turn up, oh, you look like shit. Some of them do. Some of them, <laughs> some of them, some of them literally have You're no missing a emotional... job. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, some of them have no emotional uh, connection and then walk away from each other. And some of them are, you know, husbands and wife reconnecting and, and, you know, and then there's this really uh, mm, epic that moment. That makes the sex and, awkward. Um, but what happens next? <laughs> yeah, could you? Could you Are you a necrophiliac at that, that point? I guess you would be. Absolutely. Right? Oh, absolutely. Oh, oh. I guess technically speaking. <laughs> but something happens after that, which um, really I think, and you know, I don't know if we should talk about it. You guys can look it into your own. I don't want to give any waste. Basically, I'll, I'll just okay. Spoiler alert. Basically, Sylvanas is like, no, we can't let this happen. And she doesn't want to start a war, so she doesn't kill any of the humans. She kills every single one of the Forsaken, even the ones that were walking back towards the wall to come back to, to her. She kills. She said this is a disease and it needs to be snuffed out. She kills every single one of the Forsaken. And she also kills Arthas' sister, um, or, uh, Memethil, whatever her name wow. was. And she gets resurrected by... Uh, 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 some kind of uh, she gets resurrected by a uh, what are they called? The banshees? You know? No, no, no. By the by the uh, gods of the 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 Naru, the Naru. Oh, and the she Naru. Comes, she comes like a light forged forsaken or some crap. I don't know. But How anyway, I think that was a pretty cool moment, and I think seeing like Sylvanas like that was pretty cool. But a lot of the lore in in BFA and Legion, I feel really kind of disconnected from. I feel like there's the classic lore, and then there's the new lore. You know. That's that's full on. I had no idea that any of that was coming. And I don't mind hearing spoilers at all because yeah. I'm not really that into BFA and all that stuff. But um, that's really interesting that they take that direction with Sylvanas, basically. I mean, I'm getting the, the terrible analogy of like having a Forrest Gump moment where she's running for years and years and just be like, well, I'm pretty tired now. I guess I'll go home and just changes her mind and does something <laughs> else. It's yeah. a pretty big clip on her character arc. All right. Yeah, they're, they're really um, – they're really – Kind of, and what I'm really afraid of here is that they're going to make her Garrosh like 2.0. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah, and yeah. that's what I don't want to see. I want it to be deeper. I want it to be, you know, and you know, they're already you're already seeing like Sourfang is basically he's like I'm not going to be a part of your horde. So that's a, this is a character who I really love. Sourfang pretty much leaving the horde. Um, mm. You know, not really joining the like he doesn't really I don't know what he does, but it's kind of like like I said before that it's kind of like this. I love the lore in classic. But I kind of treat the lore, the modern lore, in a separate. I kind of put it in a separate file. I'm like, eh, this yep. this isn't the real lore. The classic lore to me is the real lore. Definitely, and it, it's been hard to sort of uh, compartmentalize in that regard because with the lore episodes that I do on the show, I've got to cut off. Like what I try to do is I try to cut off at the vanilla point where I go, all right, that's it as of world of warcraft not as yeah. of the expansions obviously a lot of stuff happens in expansions blah blah right. blah but at times i am not quite sure there's a little bit of an area where it starts to just seep into burning crusade with the law mm -hmm. where I, I think i've been okay for the most part but one or two little things i'll say where listeners might go ah oh, that actually happened in burning crusade or something i'm like ah damn okay but it is hard to tell but it's really interesting like you know Things like with Sylvanas, I literally just covered Sylvanas on the show. And one yep. thing that always um, interests me in terms of, because I cover community reactions as well, and I try to feel what, what we all think as players about these places, these people that have been created for us by Blizzard. And a lot of the characters that you would think are quite beloved, when you go online and you start looking through forums, it's mostly negative. And yep, it's no. really surprising to see. I don't know if that's surly, like, you know, we as players where where by nature relatively surly or, or pessimistic or what it might be. But I was expecting like, I love Sylvanas and I love Thrall. And everyone's like, screw those, screw those people. We hate them. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think Thrall's it... character really went downhill. <laughs> you you, oh, yeah. you covered mm. that really well in your podcast mm. you did on Thrall. He was, he was a person who, ha who made mistakes and wasn't a, what's the word? Oh. He was well, human. Yeah, he was more human than most humans, yes. And then he became some kind of, like, Jesus, basically. He became he could do no yeah. wrong. He's indestructible, you know, all those things. And there's a literary, there's a music, movie term for that, and I can't remember what it is, Josh. Maybe you can help me. Someone who has no faults. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, it's the, um, oh, it's the something Mary. Uh, yeah. No, 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 no. no. I, I should know. I bring it up at work all the time. The Mary I, I is the female version of it. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Something about Mary. Uh, yeah. They can do no wrong when. Uh, well, I I brought it up on the podcast as well when they're a um and my listeners will be laughing right now that I can't come up with the term. But it's basically Mary Sue. Term. Mary You're Sue. Right. Mary, is it a Mary, Mary Sue? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And a Marty Sue. Mary well, Sue yeah, and a Marty Sue. Okay. Can't do any wrong. Um, and they literally are the perfect person. And it, it's frustrating to people, obviously, when they want yeah. their characters with faults. Exactly. Like, and it, as a literature, you know, as someone who's reading something, like I want to be able to relate to the character, not have someone who's a godlike figure that I can can't even relate to. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And like, wh- where's the where's the fun in that yeah i mean look at the most successful things right now look at game of thrones i mean why is it so successful because you can literally get in any of the characters shoes you know what i mean Mm. yeah and even the ones that are crazy you know that that are you know portrayed like look at um cersei you know and then look at look at the journey she's been through and uh after what she does to uh Uh, don't 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 yeah yeah Yeah. (laughs) It was a pretty epic moment, though. So let's yeah. go back into WoW. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So what role do you prefer to play? Is it DPS? Is it tanking? Is it healing? Well, all my experience is obviously with DPS, with the Rogue. So that was something that, as a player who is still really finding my feet in MMOs, um, you know, I, I think it's pretty fair to say that's the easiest role to just slot into if you don't really know what you're doing and to learn the game. Um, going forward for Classic... I really, and and obviously a lot of players feel this way. It's kind of a chance for me to do things differently. I, I know some people enjoy a role so much that that's that's them. You know, I'm a I'm a mage for life. I'm a I'm a rogue for life. I'm a I'm you know I'm a hunter for life. I get all that, but I want to try to mix it up. And so the roles that I'll be pursuing will be either. I mean, I'm pretty much decided I'm going to be a healer in classic. Um, we talked yes. about this recently. Yeah, it's something, and and this falls back into line with the argument before when I say that I like to feel like I'm somewhat of a benevolent force in the yeah. game. I want to be the good guy, um, you know. When I'm spending um, so much time being an asshole in real life, it's nice to sort of escape. Out I know of exactly that. what you mean. And, and do, <laughs> yeah, no, no. But um, a DPS is something that I still love, but I'm not as interested in for classic. I, I will probably have a DPS alt. I don't think I'm quite ready for tanking because I honestly don't know if I'm skilled enough at the game to pull that off. But, um, you know, yeah, healing is what I'll be focusing on going forward. I feel like that's a common thing, though, where people feel like they're not skilled enough to be a tank and then they try and they're like, this isn't hard at all. Because honestly, tanking, yes, you have to know the fights, but you only have to know what you have to do as a tank. When to taunt, when to use your defenses, that kind of thing. Unless you're the raid leader, of course. And that when I I didn't start tanking until uh, Wrath of the Lich King and I and I I uh, main tanked ICC sometimes I I healed and I tanked whenever we needed. And honestly, I got to say, I was really surprised at how um, my what I thought tanking was going to be was nothing what it actually was. I was afraid to tank because I I felt like I didn't have the I didn't well I didn't have the confidence honestly. And then I did it and I was baffled by how different it was. But I got to say, healing for me is the most rewarding uh, role, and it is also the most fun role that I have ever have ever uh, been a part of. It's interesting when you talk about skill. It, it is something that comes up, and, and I think of quite a bit. And and that's interesting to hear about tanking. I mean, it's still something that. Don't get me wrong; I haven't ruled it out. Um, I'm I'm intrigued by it because the thought of the. The fact that there are things in this game, I almost look at it as content that I haven't done yet if you haven't played as a tank. Yeah. And obviously you see the game through a completely different uh, set of glasses um, when you do that. And it's something where I might get there one day, but when we talk about skill and I could probably do it, it's just that I guess sometimes you get lazy going, well, then I have to learn all the fights and I've got to do this. And I guess you should know all the fights anyway if you're, you're a hardcore raider. Yeah. But I didn't do much raiding back in the day at all. I didn't do any. But, um, you know, it, the skill level of players in the game is something that really um, interests me because it, we're, we're a funny lot gamers in that, you know, a lot of us say, not, 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 everyone but you know i'm number one i'm the best you know i I, i'm i'm the best warrior i'm the best rogue i'm the best whatever you'll ever find um now a lot of people are quite humble as well but there's also just a confidence in your proficiency to some level um it's interesting that in terms of skill uh how skilled you can be will only take you i don't know what i'm talking about in terms of specs now like Mm -hmm. 
how far your skill can take certain specs in the game when people say things are broken this is what i'm focused on the show and what i'm trying to dispel a lot of um sort of misconceptions about the game where people rule out like balanced druids people rule out certain specs saying not completely unviable and what i'm trying to do with the show is say that skill can actually take you a little bit further and perhaps unlock some specs that you thought were completely untouchable if you you know absolutely absolutely agree josh you know there's something about uh when you get into playing a character right for me i believe that any new player unless unless you already know like what you're doing but time and practice makes perfect right like i played a certain way of healing for a long time and when you get comfortable in that certain way it's a bad thing you want to keep your mind open look at constantly be looking at what can i can do to improve is it you know do i need to at first i was a clicker and i thought well i'm doing as much dps as i can and then i you know started using keybinds started using macros and my dps exploded and it's like little things like that learning what you can do to improve yourself and you know as humans a lot of the time even like with when we were talking about guitar you fall into the easy way the way that you're used to doing it and when someone shows you something different you're at first you're like well no i do it my way this is how i do it but then you try and you notice wow this is i'm getting a lot better and you know i i i was used to this way of doing it and now i'm doing it a lot better and trying something new and you just keep learning you keep learning you keep learning and i and i think that's true with every you can do it with a balanced druid with an enhancement shaman there's always going to be ways to improve yourself you're never going to be at your peak I, I believe that i believe there's always something you can do to improve yourself and you need to strive to do that to keep doing that and i feel like with any class that's that's the best way to go with it yeah i definitely agree i think that um you know like we see with s and other people who play these meme specs um <clears throat> they're they show people that yes with skill with patience with and with research you can make a lot of specs viable that are not considered viable by many people um so so let's switch gears a little bit, and I think that um, if you if you don't know who Josh is, <laughs> uh, he is uh, he does a World of Warcraft podcast among other things. Uh, but uh, his World of Warcraft podcast is is absolutely amazing. It's called Countdown the Classic. And so Josh, I, I just want to know a little bit about you. How did you get into content creation at all? I started my first podcast about 10 or 11 years ago. And this was like, I, I've loved, I've loved podcasts from the outset. Um, you know, I still remember um, listening to them 10 years ago. You know, I got into podcasts through, I'm a big sports guy. Um, you know, the Bill Simmons, the old BS reports um, podcast is, is what I used to listen to. And I listened to like every episode he ever did. I still listen to him to this day. Um, so I would just love catching up on sports through podcasts when you're driving, when you're going for a run, whatever. Um, and so one day, obviously I got a, a couple of friends together as everyone seems to do back then. And even now, and just said, Hey, let's do a podcast. Everybody's doing it. Let's, you know, <laughs> and, and the best part is every podcast conversation ever starts with, we can do it better than these guys. Like, and, and we did a drunk, which was, you know, as you do, uh, you know, <laughs> the, the concept of three guys sitting around drinking and talking about nothing was apparently appealing to us. <laughs> um, and so that's how I got started. We went for about, you know, I want to say six or seven months and uh, we had a great time. And then I kind of walked away after that going, well, I've, you know, scratched that, uh, ticked that off the bucket list. I've done the podcasting thing. Then about uh, nine months ago, um, we, I started another podcast, my second podcast, um, called the cinephiles and that's a movie based podcast. And how that came to be was I, uh, as you know, I'm, I'm a lawyer, um, in my office, I, I was working with two guys where we were just talking about movies all day, every day. When we weren't in court, we were out of court in the office, joking around about movies. And these two guys have, they're two of the funniest guys I've ever met. They absolutely slay me. And uh, we were really having fun and we, we sort of noticed that we were just going on for hours and hours about movies. And we thought like, we should do a podcast. And once again, that we'll be better than anything else out there. And it's all a joke and blah, blah, blah. But um, we started the show and we started really enjoying it. And then about six months into the run of the cinephiles, I said to the guys, I was like, look, I've, I've really wanted to, for the longest time, do a gaming podcast. And I don't really know how to get started. And the initial concept of Countdown to Classic was actually not Warcraft related. Uh, what I'd wanted to do, and I wouldn't rule this out further down the track, but it would be tough, but 
I wanted to start up a series of um, an oral history of the making of some of the bigger games that have come out over time. So I wanted to do like two hour deep dives through all the interviews, all the facts, all the, you know, behind the scenes stuff of things like, you know, the making of Final Fantasy VII, the making of Metal Gear Solid, the making of the Elder Scrolls and stuff like that. And just have it like that audio book style of, um, you know, just quote, like I do on the show now, quoting people through interviews that I found online and just giving people a chance to ride around and hear about how their favorite games came to be. Um, I scratched that idea and that was mainly when, you know, a bit after Classic was announced because I was so pumped for Classic and I thought, God, I, I, I'm really, really excited for this game. I just want to talk about it. I didn't know anyone who played Warcraft in my real life um, and I was just like, I, I'm so excited. I have no avenue to talk about this. How do I sort of release? And then I went, well, Warcraft podcast, how would I do it? Uh, is there enough to talk about? And then I worked out that there was more than enough to talk about. And, and as you can hear, as I go on now, fortunately, talking isn't much of a problem for me, given what I do professionally. Um, and so the show just came to be and I planned, you know, three episodes per week. And well, it started as two episodes per week. Then it went to three episodes per week. And it's just gone on and on. And that's been kind of how the content came to be. Wow. And now we're up to episode, what is it, 45 or 40? 47 as of last 47. night. Wow. And yeah. now you actually are doing it better than all the other guys. Like you were well, stopping before. <laughs> I, I appreciate that. I hope so. I'm trying. I'm trying my best. But um, yeah, after four months, we're into episode number 47. That's and, amazing. Uh, it's getting to the point now where I've, I still look around on iTunes sometimes for other podcasts and, and I do listen to other podcasts and I love other Warcraft podcasts. I wish I had more time when I wasn't working on mine to listen to more of the others, but there are some of the greatest hits that I absolutely listen to. Um, you know, I do like everyone else in, in, on the classic wow subreddit and, and, and on the classic community, I listen to classic cast. I listen to you guys. I listen to all this stuff that I can find and I enjoy it. But um, you know, time being time constricted i can't get to all of them but um i i'm as much of a fan as as everyone else is it's not like um you know i just work my own show and ignore everyone else i i really try to get involved in the community as much as i can and, and one of the funny things is um i was really a big lurker before this show i i don't think i'd ever written I, I wrote one forum post in my life and that was in response to like a lost episode when lost was winding up <laughs> uh, i was so big on lost back in the day and I, uh, I, wrote, I wrote like an epic essay on my breakdown of one of the final episodes um and that was the first time i'd ever posted on a forum and i was just always like why post when i can just lurk right and i'd always do, uh, sort of not place the right amount of value of being a part of commu a community and talking with people on forums and things like that and having that back and forth and making connections. Yeah. And now through the show, I've been able to do that and it's been amazing. Yes. I can really, I can really agree with that, Josh. I mean, I was the same way with, especially when it came to forum posting and I was always just reading and making my own assumption in my head and never putting it out there. I did it a few times. I think when like, I went to look on my wow forum and I had like maybe 12 forum posts I was like, wow, you know, I have so much to say about wow, but I'm not saying it where it needs to be said, you know, and uh, I think that was a big part about why we wanted to talk about these things with the show. But, you know, I, my brother and I, I know we, we, we regard your show as without a doubt being the best wow podcast around, you know, it, just the, the way you do it, your professionalism, the questions you ask are amazing. And, um, but, and the way know, you structure the podcast too is, yes, is also very, and, very well done. But can you tell uh, tell us a little bit about the preparation that you go through for your show to get it the way that you like it? For sure, and and obviously, thank you so much for the kind words, guys. I um, I I yeah, as you know, I I try to stray away from the ask you thing a little bit, but no, I I do appreciate it. It's it's, it's I, true, I definitely man. get I get shy when it comes up and all that stuff. I get it, but um, to into how it goes, and this is something that a lot of people don't know about um in in the preparation, but it, it's. It, and I, I appreciate that a lot of fans get back to me and say that they can hear that, you know, a lot of work goes into it. And it, it's a part of me is sort of like, if they only knew it, it is a lot of work. Yeah. And um, here's how it works. Basically, I am fortunate enough, uh, even though I work as a criminal lawyer. Um, yes, I'm in court a lot. Yes, work is, is full on. But um, I actually work reasonably short hours. So I'm only at work from eight in the morning till 430 at night. Oh, sorry, 430 in the afternoon. And I come straight home from work 
pretty much every day. I'm home by five and I get started on Countdown to Classic most days. Um, and it's about 30, 30 hours a week or more sometimes to go into Countdown to Classic. So I'm lucky enough that I only work a, you know, 40 hour work week. If I had a, if I worked in finance or- But Josh, that's a full-time a, job, dude. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, well, yeah it's, it's absolutely still a full-time job, yeah, but it's, yeah. it's not like I have friends that, you know, are bankers and things like that that work 60 and 70 hours a week. And, and if I was getting flogged like that, there's no way countdown to classic could exist in any way, shape or form. I'm lucky enough that yes, I have a full-time job, but it, it's sort of, you know, basically um, on the lower end of the scale in terms of hours being committed to the office. Now I still like on lunch breaks, I'll sneak in some, some time where I can work on a script for classic for countdown to classic. But um, yeah, so each episode, you know, the, the forums episode, the lore episode, um, you know, they can take about 10, they take about 10 hours to prepare because I write everything out as a script. Um, I would say 95% of what you hear is scripted and only 5% of that is me riffing. Wow. Um, so and then that the takes a lot of time. Too. Yeah, yeah it, it's just it, plucking. Like I read a lot of the forums and that takes time and plucking out the best comments that really spur the conversation in the direction that I want it to go. Um, the lore episodes don't take quite as long as, as I say on the show, that is me, you know, I'm just reading out what you can find on WoW Wiki and WowPedia, but I just try to do it with a bit of flair and, and make it sound like a little bit of an audio book or something like that. And you That's do some voice acting as well. And I started doing some voice acting, which I wouldn't have done. I did it as a joke once. And then like um, a lot of listeners got back to me and said they really liked it. And I wasn't even really like trying. And I said to them, like, I was half, I was half assing it. Imagine if I used my whole ass and <laughs> now I've started really getting into it. And like, for instance, in the latest Sylvanas episode, I'm lucky enough to have a, a mixing board here where I can put some sound effects in. And I did like an Arthur's voice and a yeah. Sylvanas voice and, and uh, the really fun one was the Varimathras voice, where I really sound like a bit of a demon. It's really cool. But um, I enjoy that part of it. So that's good fun. But the interviews as well, you know, they um, I'm focusing a bit more on interviews now because with the personal life, um, I, I want to get a bit more of a balance. The show has been amazing, but I'm trying to work out a way in which it just takes up a little bit less of my time. Yeah, and, you know, with the, new, with the new relationship and everything, I don't want to be... Um, you know, I, I want to give um, my new girlfriend the time that she deserves as well. So Absolutely. I can't sit here and sort of be on the show all the time. But the interviews only take about half that time. I would say an interview episode generally takes me about three to four hours to put together. Wow. But I, you got to I got to say, man, your passion really bleeds into your work. Um, you know, I don't think anyone who wasn't passionate about what they're doing put, could put that much time and effort into what they're doing. So I think it's amazing. I really do. And, and, uh, to, to see how much work you put into it. And a lot of people I think don't realize, you know, how much time goes into just little things, just little things like, you know, Melbron recently did a video that was what, you know, 15 minutes long. It took you what, seven, eight hours to do yeah. something like a that. 12, a 12 minute video took me seven hours. So yeah. it, I, I write the script that takes me an hour. I act out mm -hmm. the script, act out. That takes me yeah. another hour or so of editing. Mm -hmm. And then you got to put the video together. So all those little splices, all the little images to go in, all the, you know, Which then the rendering. Then... Special. Yeah. So it's, yeah, I mean, I don't think anybody really realizes how much time, like you, you said, I mean, like you, 10 hours sometimes for an episode. Mm -hmm. That's an hour worth of audio. It's in someone's ear. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. And it's, um, it's pretty incredible. And I, I don't know. So I was, my next question was going to be, how do you juggle it? But like, I think you kind of answered that. It's just. I think if you if if, you, if there's a will there's a way and I think you know for you and I and 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 Def Camp as well Def Camp is uh, in a, in a fledgling career as well and like for for myself who's working on an advanced degree and then you're a lawyer like sometimes I don't know how the hell I do it um, yeah. or how the hell you do it and it's like I just juggling it all is it's got to be hard and I just uh, thanks for doing it though because uh, yeah you know. really man <clears throat> look honestly it's if the community wasn't getting involved, if the listeners weren't getting back to me, it would be really hard to push yeah. on. But the, the the really, and I'm sure you guys get this as well. And as I said, I, I absolutely love your videos and, and Melderon, as you're saying, you can see that the work goes into it. You can just tell because, and, and you guys, I'm sure you know this, it is so tempting to sit there and just be like, you know what? I'm just going to turn on a recorder and I'm just going to riff for an hour and, yep. you know, print record get it out there don't care it's somewhat tempting to do that but then you're not differentiating yourself yes. 
in any way, shape, or form. If you know, the, it's no secret that every man and his dog, you know, every every man, woman, person, child, whatever, has a podcast, a YouTube channel, whatever, right? Um, there's a lot of people talking about classic. I think some people, there's a bit of a misconception that there's not many voices out there about classic. I actually think it's the opposite. I think there's plenty of us. It's great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, but if you want to somehow create an identity for yourself and also create something that people want to keep returning to, you've got to put in the work and, and that kind of just that notion when people sit down and go, huh, this sounds different. That's what you're looking for. And if that takes a little bit of elbow grease, then so be it. And yeah. it's, you know, it's funny because one of the podcasts that um, got me into doing Countdown to Classic, I quite enjoyed. There's been a few uh, classic podcasts that started up and they fall into the trap of doing their first handful of episodes and then you never see them again. Um, you know, one of them was a, a, a great, a great podcast from a dude who recorded it in his car traveling Podcast to work. of the Whale. Yeah. yeah, and oh, and I really yeah. I really enjoyed podcast of the whale, but yep. a part of me was like, I wish this wasn't happening in like what sounds like a, an airport. An airport. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, and um and so I just thought if 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 someone just did this right, then that's something that I would tune into. And so I try to do a podcast that I would listen to myself. And I think with your videos, you guys. I think it's it's very much so probably the same way you create videos that you would probably want to watch yourselves yeah. and um and, and it's yeah. really good to see a bit of effort going into your videos and and you know i sit there and i watch them and and i i know i don't do video editing um but i completely appreciate that it's more work than audio editing and Ooh, I, audio I, is hard too <laughs> Oh, oh, it is. It is. But, yeah. you know, I, I, I'm i not envious of your position. Yeah. Um, yeah, at all. Yeah, I think it just comes down to passion. And uh, yeah, like, you said, yeah. like you said about Podcast of the Whale, I, I, it's really funny. I, I knew you were going to say that. And I was like, before you came along onto the scene, he was making podcasts. I think it was. I think you were. I think that was correct, right? He was making them before you. I think maybe not. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah, definitely. and uh, and I was like, oh man, and then like episode eleven, I think it, it was. It was the professions episode. He just stopped. That's right. And then I was like, crap. And then I start seeing stuff on Twitter and start seeing, and I saw your show, and I'm like, boom, there it is. And what you you know, I'm not, I'm not gonna say you you did what he couldn't do, but you put in the time and you put in the editing and all that stuff, and that's what really. And it just—it's great with we have in our community in our little close group, uh, we we have a kind of a smallish content creator community. It's not large like retail, but um, yeah. And, and I think it's just great. We're really we're really doing well, and I think uh, everyone's starting to improve. And we we've, we've improved as well. I mean, we, oh, absolutely. God, yeah, we've we, we started making lot. videos two years ago. Uh, I started making videos two years ago, and and they're horrible. My old videos. I mean, it's just basically <laughs> literally turn on OBS. And I'm like, yep. hey guys, Melder on here. Uh, I'm gonna teach you how to like loot things. Yeah, it, it's you know. But, but you like, learn from that, you know. Yeah, you get you absolutely. get some constructive criticism. But the the most way I think we've learned is just by watching other people, rewatching what we did. Say, okay, I can improve on this. I can improve on this. I can improve on this. And every time I make a video, I feel like I learned something. I really do. Mm. I feel like, oh, I improved on my last video. I improved my last video. And that I feel like if I'm not improving each video then i'm not then i'm doing something wrong i mean that's how i feel even I, I if think, just a little bit i think a lot of people what consumers want and, and and the people watching this video on youtube right now might feel this way if you know there are people obviously a lot of people out there who, who don't um get into content creation they might want to but they don't happy just to, to watch 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 which is great perfect i was that way for many 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 years but what people i think want is they don't want necessarily just another um, you know, when we do things like uh, class guide videos and things like that, here's what class to pick in World of Warcraft. And it's, it's like coming back to music again, Def Camp, when you talk about things like covers and you go, if you're not going to do it better than anything else that's out there, don't bother. Yes. And if you're just doing it just to do it, you're the 50th class guide video that, yeah, people might watch, but are they going to remember you? Mm -hmm. um, and, and I like that you know, you, you have to basically take on something and think I'm going to either a talk about something that hasn't been spoken about before or hasn't been spoken about in this way um, and bring your own spin to it. And, and again, you know, you guys do bring your own spin to your content. Yeah. That's why I watch you. I go to other avenues because they talk about different things. If I wanted the same old stuff, 
then, you know, I, we, we'd just be caught in this, again, this sort of circle jerk of like, here it is again, and here it is yep. again, and here it is again. And that's why it's so important, I think, to uh, open your horizons. You know, don't only surround yourself with people who are like-minded. Try to surround yourself with people who think differently or outside the box. I mean, like, you know, I love what Melron did. He's like, oh, well, I'm going to make a guide. I'm going to make a shaman guide, but I'm going to make a shaman tank guide. And he made, a, a, instead of just a regular shaman leveling guide, a resto shaman leveling guide. Like, just yeah. thinking a little bit outside the box, trying to, you know, put your passion into it. And not really care, you know, and, and a lot of the big thing that Melron, I think you were worried about, Phil, was like, oh, people are really going to take this seriously or not or what. And it really got very positive feedback. And I think it's mm. so cool. I think it shows, you know, originality is very important. It's hard, and but it's important. You're exactly right. And and as you, you're spot on there when you say that you you – doesn't you don't have to think that far outside of the box mm -hmm. just take that half step away because you know we're still stuck within the bounds of world of warcraft right. there really is even though there's a boatload to talk about there's still only a, you know a certain amount of stuff that you can say and at the end of the day it's it, one of the funny things that that comes up for me is people who don't know about the show or people who aren't that well versed with vanilla will often say to me three episodes a week or, you know, five, six hours of, of a podcast a week, how could there possibly be that much to talk about in Vanilla World of Warcraft? And I always say to them, you'd be surprised. Um, there definitely and, and is. And there really is. Yeah, there's a deep well. The well has a bottom, but it is deep. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, you have, you, have th you have three specs per class. You have nine classes. You have... Uh... <laughs> raids you have dungeons you have pvp you have professions you War. have money you have auction mm -hmm. houses and you have i mean it's just it's and the combination of those things and you have yes. just so many different things you can do it's yep. um you and know then like, you have the players who play it yeah you can talk about that too yeah talk and josh does and we do yeah yep. the experiences you have in the game which will never end that's the amazing part of it is yeah there's there's a limited amount of of content in the game there's a limited amount of this and that but there is not a limited amount of experiences in the game and that's the amazing part. So you can talk about this experience we had doing world PvP, or this experience we had running this dungeon, or this experience we had, you know, doing this epic, epic raid boss. And you know, that is what is why with this show, what we do is to try to have, you know, the best of both worlds, to have content creators on the show and also have just people to play the game. Because there's so many stories out there. There's so many uh really cool, you know, uh, engaging things to talk about so i think it's i think it's awesome that you're doing what you're doing josh but if you had one person okay one person that you would love to interview someone that might be you know very hard to get who would it be uh i start at the top and i go with mike Morham. um okay. i i would love to do because i mean i i also i mean i've got a law degree i work as a lawyer i also a lot of people don't know have a journalism degree um mm -hmm. i studied both at the same time wow. at university and um, that was what I actually originally wanted to do when I left uh, university. I was like, I'm going to be the, the, I wanted to be the world's greatest sports journalist. And, um, you know, I was looking for a job at the height of the uh, GFC and uh, nobody was hiring. And so I, I had to ditch that pretty quickly. And I never really looked back, unfortunately, but I still attack a lot of things in terms of that, that kind of journalistic angle. And I'd love to get a really good sit down with you start at the top of the food chain and someone yeah. like Mike Morham and, and, and the head honchos over there at Blizzard. Those are the kind of people that are my dream interviews mm. that I will keep pushing for. And I've been in contact with Blizzard. I, they're probably sick of me already in terms <laughs> of I email them. They email me back about a week later. And it's always, I mean, just in touch with the PR people, I mean, and, and they've been lovely, don't get me wrong, but it's very much so like a, uh, not yet, not yet. We are yeah. not ready to talk about classic yet. And it's been frustrating from my end because I've been asking for interviews with people who are not attached to classic in any way. Right. I've been asking for interviews with, um, you know, like the director of, of cut scenes, um, uh, people like, um, you know, project managers who aren't, who are on the retail team and things like that. Um, and, and the blizzard company line has been look, it's, it's cute that you want to speak to everyone, but we are not talking about classic right now. And then I say to them, well, I don't want to talk about classic. I want to talk about 
World of Warcraft and what goes into creating it. And mm-hmm. I, how, how about this? Pinky swear, pinky swear. I will not mention classic in any way. And and unfortunately, they still said we we trust you, but we're not like the theme of your show is classic, and we're not yeah. ready. And I totally yeah. respect that. So um, I, have a, I have a little yeah. bit of a fun question. So what's what, if there's any NPC you can interview in the game? What would it be? Who would it be? <laughs> um. Oh, I wanted to say Sylvanas, but I'd be too on edge the whole time, particularly considering <laughs> she's into wiping out her own race now. Yeah. Um, it, it'd be someone that I don't really know much about personally, even though like someone like a, you know, a Jaina Proudmore or something where I know there's a lot of lore out there on Jaina, but I, I'm actually interested to do the Jaina episode on the show because I know nothing about Jaina right yeah. now. Um, and that's something where I'd love to sit down with Jaina and say, you know, Lord, Gina? <laughs> yes. What's where going, have you been you for the last year? <laughs> yeah. Are you considering wiping out your own race as well? So in hope right now. <laughs> I like what you said about uh, the Blizzard thing, though. I, and you know what, Josh? What's the worst they can say? No, right? Exactly. It's and free to ask. Exactly. And I think striving to get those answers and to even reach out there just goes to show your character and how seriously you take it. And I think that's awesome. I really do. Because, like you said, the worst they can say is no. And you're getting your name out there. Hey, this guy's been asking us and asking us. You know what? And when they're ready, they're going to have your name on there as an email to get back. So you're getting your name out there and you're getting, you know, people are, you're getting recognized. And I that, hope so. You know, yeah. Well, I'm telling you, you are. So thank you. Uh, what are some of your more memorable experiences in Countdown to Classic? For the show, um, it's really been, as a whole, the listener feedback, I think, has, has blown me away. It's, you know, you start, you start something, and as you guys know, you create a YouTube channel, you do what you do, and you kind of sit back and go, will anyone, A, consume this product, and then, B, will they give me any feedback on it? And then the comments and, and things start slowly rolling in, and it's really touching to see that. And I think the best experience for me thus far, and it's been, to be honest with you, a little bit scary, um, and I'm bracing for it, is that I haven't had the one really nasty comment or email yet. Mm. I'm waiting for, and maybe someone watching this will, um, you know, uh, break the ice for me, (laughs) but I haven't had the one really big dude, like, um, I don't like what you're saying. You're wrong on this. Screw you, screw off. I haven't had that yet, so that's been really nice. That's honestly been the, probably the the, the 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 best part of the experience so far is that um, the community that that has come together over the show, um, and a lot of them who are listening to this will, will likely agree. It's been shockingly polite and and uh, um, friendly, and and we, uh, in my Discord channel, like I, I have had no issues whatsoever in four months. And it, it's been surprising to them as well. And I, I guess it's just the way it's been. But we talk about things like the community and the classic community, and we do get we get a bad rap at times. And yeah. I feel like, don't get me wrong, it's like any community in the world, there's going to be a few bad eggs. Exactly. And, and you know, there is the loud minority in terms of toxicity and things like that. I think for the most part, the classic community is amazing. Yep. And um you know, there's a lot of people who are very respectful in their disagreement with each other. And yeah. you can sort of, the whole point of the show, and on the show I present both sides of an argument, it's this, I want to say, um, the sort of uh, polite nature of, you know, you think about in terms of sport, like I played rugby my whole life. You, you jump onto a field, the whistle blows, you beat the hell out of each other, you do horrible things on a field for, for 80, 90 minutes, whatever it might be. And then literally when the full-time whistle blows, you shake the same guy's hand that you were just stepping on his head. Yeah. And you say, do you want to grab a beer? And it, it all ends and it's all on the field yeah. of battle and that's it. And I like that it sort of is the same way for the most part with um, forum chat and things like that when we talk about classic. People can shake the hand say you have your views i have my views maybe let's agree to disagree but it's great that we both feel strongly about our respective points as opposed to it's not that regularly that i see the really harsh comments and and yeah. some really you know horrible things that get said you know it's it i love what you said josh because in the end right we're all just passionate about this this game that we all love 
you know, and uh, we've gotten a few, I think YouTube's a little bit different. For some reason on YouTube, I think people feel more compelled to talk crap or to talk shit, but it's okay because, you know, a lot of the time it starts off hostile, but it ends up being kind of, you got to know how to talk to people, right? It ends mm -hmm. up being, oh, well, we understand your point of view, this kind of thing. And I think, you know, if, if anyone, you yourself, you've had a lot of dealings with so many people in the community. Who, and that was why one of my questions were a focus on this. Who else to have a better grasp of what the community's like? And I think you're spot on, right? You know, it's a community. There's always the bad eggs, of course. There's always going to be a few people out there who cannot take the fact that your opinion is different than theirs and they get triggered and whatever. But for the most part, and most people I've met, are you know passionate understanding people and we've had so many different conversations just in our videos where people you know had a differing opinion and these are still people who love our show who watch every one of our episodes but can sit there and listen to me make, talk about for 10 minutes something they completely disagree with and say it in the comments and say it in a respectful way and say you know what guys great video i just gotta say i don't agree with this um this you know and then i talk about why what i think and then we come to an agreement where you know, you think so. that's that's great. And, you know, how else to uh, you know, talk about these things? It, you know, if you just yell at someone, say, oh, you're a piece of shit. You want improved graphics. You're an idiot. You know, they're just going to dig in more and become more hostile. And, you know, it's it's really just we're all passionate about this game. We love World of Warcraft. Some of us want something different. Some of us some of us want something completely different. But in the end, we all just want to play WoW. And I think, you know, for the most part, people in this community are amazing. And, um, you know, I got to say that if it wasn't for people like you and for people like, I always said, like S-Fan and Tips, who are really good at kind of being a mediator, even between like the retail community and the classic community, you know, being able to, in a very professional way and courteous way, explain your opinion why you think this way and not try to come off like they're wrong they're stupid or this that and the other and have just a mutual respect and understanding for each other rather than a hostile um you know interaction i think you guys do a great job of that especially you know i've watched you know uh, a good amount of or listened to a good amount of your uh, podcasts and even you know sometimes when people have differing opinions it usually comes down to we're all just, you know, passionate about this game. It's what we love. Well, there are other ways to subtly tell someone to fuck off. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And if you're smart and you're cheeky, you can still get a constructive argument for, forward. But, you know, the subtext is, you know, your your turn. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. you know, that's kind of part of the fun of it. You can still be polite, yeah. but be cheeky at the same time. But without, res if your comeback is simply just two words and one starts with an F and one starts with an O, then you, you're not thinking. Let, let's let's try, you know, as you go outside the box. Yeah. Let's go. I agree. And But speaking of opinions, so let's switch gears again. Speaking of opinions, um, I think we, you've talked about this on your podcast before, but just in case the viewers don't know. Are you changes or no changes, and why? And do you think, with the spots of news we've gotten so far, do you think Blizzard's moving towards no changes, it, it, no changes, or do you think things are going to be altered in some way? So, uh, listeners of the show know I am no changes, but when I say that, I say I lean no changes. Here's the thing, and here's why I say I lean no changes. If we get changes, I will not lose my mind in terms of I won't play this product. I've never been um, as outrageous as to go like, what? Uh, you're putting in a graphics toggle. That's it. I'm out of here. Not buying that. Not playing that. Like, I'm going to play it either way. They, they, they would have to go to a pretty extreme, unrealistic uh, length to have me go like, oh, crap, I know I just did a podcast on this game for two years, but I'm not going to play it now. <laughs> um, so, you know, I want no changes. I, I'm big on my uh, retro gaming. I want to go back to how it was, and that's fine. Yeah. However, in saying that, and, and this, um, you know, whether it riles people up or not, I'm not trying to be, um, you know, a, a sensationalist here or anything like that. I'm simply saying what I think is coming even though I want no changes, I think changes are coming. 
because I think little things are coming when I don't think big changes are coming. Here's what I'm thinking is coming. And I've said this recently on the show. And here's actually a funny thing before I say this. I think on the whole, the really, really passionate no changes crowd is softening a little bit on that no changes stance. And there's a couple of reasons for that. One is time progression. We've been arguing about this for like six, seven months now. People are just tired and you don't see as much antagonism on the forums of changes, no changes, screw you, screw you. It's died down a little bit, I would say. Um, But also I think that people just want the product and now they don't care as much as much people still care i'm not saying there's not crusaders for no changes they're definitely still out there but i think they after all this time and the realization seeps in that yeah we're we're really not getting classic for quite a while um they just want it and and they'd be ready to consume it however it is presented they might not be happy about it but they just want to play the game um so here's what i think might be coming in terms of changes when i say little things might be big things to some people, but the more and more I thought I've thought on it, I think that a cash shop is absolutely coming. Now, that's not core gameplay. That that's you know whatever it is, and that would fall in line with the the statement that we got from Blizzard recently in terms of you know um, other uh, you know um, convenience and things like yeah. that. That's right. Um, I, I I think it's more probable than not in a instance where wow classic is released in either 2019 or 2020 within the gaming market as it stands right now that we're getting a cash shop we're getting an old another method within which to funnel money to blizzard um and that's what it's all about at the end of the day which is fine you are not a big evil corporation for seeking money i'm not one of those people um i understand that games are made for financial incentives uh I don't really care if a cash shop is there and here's why I'm not going to be buying anything from it and I'm not going to spend any time looking at it. So it doesn't affect my gameplay at all. Here's what it will affect in terms of, okay, yeah, I could see someone running around with a pet. I could see someone running around with, I don't know, whatever, a haircut that they could buy that I can't get because I'm in the, the core game or whatever it might be. That doesn't particularly bother me to the point of outrage. I don't want it. I don't want to see people running around with pets, but am I going to like throw my computer out a window? No. Um, I just think it's, it's more likely than not that it's coming. Um, what else in terms of changes? I think that the argument um, has really been put forward in a great way by a lot of people now that retuning is more than likely mm. coming. Um, I 100% and, agree with yeah. that. If we're doing we're 1. Actually, 1. Was, 1. 12. That was my next question actually. Yeah. Yeah. And, and on that note, it's one of those things where I, I, my conclusion from the recent update was that neither changes nor no changes have won yet. Um, nothing can be definitively claimed as like no changes confirmed or changes confirmed. We're, we're, we're nowhere near that. Yeah, Nothing's been confirmed, but the insinuation is there through um, what they said that yes, it might be, you know, perhaps again, more likely than not that retuning is coming. Not saying, and and you know, if the, the the you know, you can always say, email me when it comes out, and go. It turns out you were wrong, idiot. They didn't change anything, and and they could still do that. Is what I'm saying. Of course, absolutely no changes is still on the cards. I'm just saying, probability wise, I think that retuning is more than likely because here's what retuning will do: it will re-deliver the classic experience. Yeah. And focus on that word experience. What was classic back in the day? It was tough when you first went through Molten Core. Not for me because yep. I didn't do it, but for you guys, um, they want that same feeling of, of difficulty. I think. What, what do you? What did Melder on? What do you think about that? I 100% agree. I think if they're going to launch with 1.12 talents and itemization, I'm not saying they should. I'm saying they they almost have to buff Molten Core, yeah, Anixia's Lair and Blackwing Lair. And that is a change. And that is something that, of course, you know, a lot of people might be upset with. But I honestly would rather it be a challenging experience than it be a face roll. I absolutely would rather go into Molten Core feeling like. But okay, Devil's Advocate here doesn't open the door for other stuff. But it's like, this is, I think there's a fine line they have to go. I think as long as they don't change mechanics, as long as they don't, as maybe just tuning up health and damage, and that's as far as they go. You know what I mean? To better. Um, react to the uh, change of having 1.12 talents 
and 1.12 itemization if they do go that way. I think as far as they should go is buffing damage, buffing health for the boss. As long as they don't mess with mechanics, that kind of thing, I think all can be kind of, you know, because this is, this is inherently a change that they do all the time, whether it's during a uh, expansion, like in Legion, where things were so undertuned that they had to tune them up. You know, it happens a lot. And basically all they do is just tune the da- damage down or uh, uh, or the health up. And that's something that I think Blizzard is pretty good at doing. So if they do do that, I think they could do it successfully without changing anything else. Now, I think about the cash shop. The only thing I'm afraid of, Josh, is like, you know, like you said, with the pets, mounts, things like that. Achieving something like a mount in Classic, getting, you know... Um, the ZG Tiger. It was such an epic experience. I would hate to see that kind of undermine it through a shop. I think if anything through a cash shop, it should be maybe character transfers to another realm. That's it. You know, definitely not Horde to Alliance. Um, you know, another thing that I've heard people talking about is uh, implementing a um, WoW token, of course, you know, which. I don't think would be a good idea. I mean, there's people who have said that it would be a great idea because it would, you know, get rid of, uh, be a big issue with gold farmers, that kind of thing. Um, but of course, gold farmers were a part of classic, if you want to argue that. Now, I definitely do think there are going to be some changes, minor, I think, maybe, things that will kind of go unnoticed to most people, like boss tuning, things like that. But I think Blizzard is kind of on the right page right now with what they're trying to do with, at least with what the dev water core announcement looked like and that recent job posting, which I got really excited about. I definitely feel that they're on the right path right now. Would you agree? Yeah, I, I, I get a positive impression. And particularly, as you say, the job posting was the real positive reinforcement yeah. that a lot of us enjoy. But uh, just on what you said with the cash shop, I just sort of want to reinforce. I think that there is a way... Um, I'm not saying we're getting pets if we get a cash shop or anything like that, but I think there is a way, even though most of us would be very unhappy with it being there, they could conceivably introduce a cash shop that wouldn't necessarily have the majority of players running to Irvine with pitchforks and flaming torches, if you know what I mean. (laughs) As you said, there's, there's certain items that they could restrict it to that wouldn't devalue the classic look or feel. As you say, if it is just character transfers, things like that, there's certain things that they can make available for purchase that perhaps we'd go like, mm, all right, I guess we'll tolerate that. You know what I mean? But um, another great point that you raised, Def Camp, that I think is, is worth sort of focusing on in terms of changes is the retuning when you say you obviously term retuning as changes and one, and I do as well. One thing I think is interesting with the no changes crowd that again, I'm, I'm part of, but I can always happy to poke a bit of fun at my own is that they seem. And when I talked about their softening a little bit, they seem to be getting a little bit flexible now. I don't know. Do you tell, you guys tell me if you think I'm way off in terms of what is a change and what isn't a change. Mm. And, one word I heard recently, um, uh, you know, we, we get like, for, in, for instance, recently on the show, I played back a quote of s Fans on Classicast, and I don't think he was saying this um, being tongue-in-cheek or being evasive or anything like that, but he used the word adjustment in relation to retuning, and I thought, you know, the, the devil inside of me was going, that's a convenient alternative word to use instead of change. Yeah. So, oh, no, and I could just see the, the no changes crowd being like, no, no, that's not a change. That's an adjustment. It's a tweak. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah, and yeah. still going, no changes one. Like, it's it's going to get a little bit funny, I think. It going was an forward. oversight. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think you're right. I think, it, 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 one, it has to do with the time that we're waiting Two, I think people are realizing how much of an endeavor this really was. Myself included, I thought they're just gonna mm-hmm. get the NOST, uh, get the NOST uh, f- um, open source that software and just remake NOST, basically, right? Yeah. They're not gonna do that. Blizzard would never do that. They're, they 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 want to make proud. this their own. Um, so they're going to make it uh, as epic as they possibly can. And I think that's why some people are kind of not being as adamant, maybe, uh, yes. with with their no changes. Uh, but to me, and to I think everyone can kind of agree. Maybe in the no change community, what, what we mean by no changes is no non endemic changes to the game, meaning mm-hmm. that nothing from other expansions um, and nothing that was not in the core game. So, technically, yeah. a retuning would be a change. However, 
Um, I think it may be a necessary evil if we do incorporate 1.12. Well, they um, also did retuning in vanilla. I mean, retuning happened. They did, but this but yeah. this retuning was never happening in vanilla. Right. I understand. So that would yes. be that's yeah. that's what a non endemic change is, right? Right. I'm not saying I'm for or against it. I'm not saying that I would not play the game. All I'm saying mm-hmm. is that that's how we define. That's how I define no changes personally. Me. But, yeah. Yeah. But like you and, said, and that's Josh. The yep. Oh, no, I'm just sorry. I think the uh, the actual mood on people, how you said, like people are getting a little bit softer towards change. I think since these two announcements, people kind of see where Blizzard has their head, their, their, where they're looking. And I think people have been a little bit calmed by that. And I think uh, the all around mood has been uh, kind of like how I feel at least is that Blizzard has the best intentions in mind. They feel they, they, they kind of grasp where we are. And I think people are a little bit more okay with uh, where things are going. That's what I think. Yeah, I completely agree with that. And as Melderon was saying, I, I think that the funny part of it now is whether people are going to care about this or not in six months' time, I don't know. But it comes down to what your definitions are. How do you define a change? How do you define no changes? You know, Melderon, to, to, you know, some people would say to you right now, they'd be like, um, no, 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 no. No changes means literally not one change. And when you change the scope like that, then it's something different. But that's the beauty of, of what the community has been like now is there are kind of like four or five different definitions of what no changes means, as silly as that might seem. Like no changes in plain English seems to indicate no changes, not one change. But some people are saying, well, I don't see that as being a change, so mm-hmm. it's still kind of no changes. It's it's been fun is what I'll say. Yeah, I made a vlog a little while ago. It's it's It was maybe about probably about three or four months ago now. It's one of the – I do – I do sometimes do a vlog series that's totally unscripted where I just talk. And what I was saying was that there's there's a spectrum, obvious spectrum. There's changes on one end, mm-hmm. no changes on the other. But if you zoom in to the no changes, a mm-hmm. micro spectrum uh, also appears. And you have another mm-hmm. spectrum inside no changes. And that's the spectrum that I think we're talking about right now. There is there is actually a spectrum within the no changes spec- <laughs> end of the big spectrum that people exist in. And there's a lot of people, and, and everyone has a lot of different opinions there. So it's, no changes is not as clear as it as it may yeah. seem. Absolutely. It's no different to a major political party. You have different factions within, even Correct. though they, they identify as Republican or Democratic, they still might hold different sub, uh, sort of uh, micro values, if you will. And then they go off in their different little factions. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. So, so Josh, in a perfect world where you could get everything you wanted, what would you like to see? What would your perfect classic be? My perfect classic um, is a no changes classic. Um, in saying that, it's it's also something where I, I can't affect this, but my perfect classic would also have the perfect community. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't want to see toxicity. I, I, it, it is a shame when you jump on. Um, you know, and you see this in retail, you might see it on private servers or what have you. There's still the point where, you know, we get a broad demographic that plays this game and I'm not here to, to advocate or change human behavior or gamer behavior or anything like that. You know, there's great parts about being a gamer. There's some, uh, you know, parts that you see that make you kind of frown and, and uh, uh, furrow your brow a little bit. But um, when you jump on, you see some of the stuff you see in Baron's chat, um, you know, it really sort of makes you go like, oh, dude, really? Like, yeah. oh, are we really, yeah. really saying that kind of stuff? Yeah, I know what you mean. And, and my perfect World of Warcraft wouldn't have, some people would say that's what makes WoW, WoW, you know, but I would sort of be like, you can still have the, the shit talk without going to some of the extents that people do. Some of the racist stuff. It, yeah. It's, yeah. If anyone yeah. listens to this and, and involves themselves in any kind of racist talk in the Barrens, please stop. If you're from a, if you're a minority, and you're playing the game, just put yourself in their shoes. Yeah, imagine without it. Yeah. Someone posted. Someone sent to me. Um, posted a screenshot of uh, some chat, some world chat that they saw in game the other day, and it was a guy talking about you know things, you know horrible things that he would do uh, to to other people, and um, it was just reading it. I was like. A part, and, and I'd be interested to hear what you guys think about this. A part of me is, and this comes through on the show, on Countdown to Classic, obviously I introduce myself every episode. My name is Josh Corbett. I'm a person. This is me. I'm, I'm you know, I am who I am. 
feel free to look me up, uh, you know, contact me online, whatever you can talk to me. I'm a, I'm real, right? I'm, and I appreciate that it's a big part of gamer culture and, and I might cop a bit of heat for saying this, but I'm not super big, even though I completely respect the importance of it. I'm not super big on anonymity. Um, and the reason being, obviously you can say whatever the hell you want and there are no ramifications whatsoever. Yep. I don't know if there's any way in which Blizzard could attack this in World of Warcraft. And I, I appreciate that it would be almost impossible for them to moderate chat unless, unless someone reports it to them. There's no way Blizzard can pick up on all this stuff. But if there was a way, some bot or something that just picks these people up straight away and just goes, you know what? You think you're anonymous, but you're not. We saw what you said, banned. That might be something that cleans things up. I don't know. And I know a lot of people might be jumping up and down here and uh, going, no, no, don't censor me. I, I think the uh, tone is a little bit different on Blizzard games than it is on private servers. I think on private servers, people get away with things that they wouldn't normally get away with yes. on Blizzard games. Yes. So I think yeah. it's a lot different there. And also, they're most likely just 15 year old edgy kids, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or just <laughs> 20 year olds who act like they're 15 year olds. Yeah. But, you know, most of the time, it's some edgy kid wanting yeah. to try I'm, to seem cool. I'm usually not a fan of censorship, but this is a private, this isn't, you know, this isn't like a demonstration you're doing outside of the Capitol, right? This is a game, yeah. this is a private industry. So. Yeah. Freedom of speech doesn't apply here. Yeah. I, 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 correct me if I'm wrong. You're a lawyer. I mean, but I, but I think this it's a private situation, correct? It's a it's a, absolutely. I agree with you. And and don't get me wrong. I, I appreciate how I'm sounding. I'm not big on censorship as well. But an interesting point has been raised recently on the Warcraft forums, where a few of the community managers have been piping up recently, and I've seen it blowing up on Twitter, where people have been calling out for, and I don't, I don't want to go too deep down this avenue, and it opens up a whole other can of worms that's probably not, you know, for another time, believe me. But when people talk about, you know, freedom of speech and censorship and blah, 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 um, Blizzard very much so uh, puts the clamp down a little bit and goes, Freedom of speech is cute and everything, but we're still a private corporation who we moderate our own forums Correct. and we kind of get to say what you can and can't say. And it's no different within the bounds of World of Warcraft. You're still operating by their terms of service. Yep. And they can sort of go like, hey, buddy, like uh, you're pretty heavy on the uh, racial stuff or something. We would like to ask you to leave or something yeah. like that. I it's like know. going to someone's house. It's it's their house. And if you go to someone's house and you say the, the N-word, let's say, they're going to kick you the F out of the house. And they have every right to do that. Just it's the same thing. You're living inside Blizzard's world. They're, they're living in their home, and if they kick yeah. you out, that's their right to do that. That's how I feel about it. Um, you know, and, and, and I say the N word. That's what I've been seeing a lot in the Baron chat and private servers. Um, and it's yeah. like, dude, like, come on, man. You're not. You're not tough. Say that to someone's face. You know what I mean? Like yeah. that's that's the way I look at it. You know, if it, and of course they wouldn't. Nine times out of ten, yeah. they feel tough behind a keyboard. And I and I think that's. I sound a little. I'm getting a little uh, personal here, but I, but I, th I think that um, if you involve yourself in that kind of behavior, it's it's not an excuse if you're young. Uh, it's not an excuse if you're old. You just don't do it, and you know that's not how the real world world works. And I would argue if you are a young person, I think that's cool. You need to learn a little bit about the world because you're not going to get very far thinking that way. And anyway, not to play dad, but. <laughs> Yeah. So to bring it back to answer your question, Def Cap, after that long tangent that I do apologize for, in my perfect well, I want the perfect community, and we're so close to being that. Yes, I feel that way too. I think yeah. the communities that we have built with around around our little community have, have become, the. I mean, it's the best community I've ever been a part of, especially our little bubble that we have, and yours as well. It's been, uh, it's been amazing. The people that we've met have been amazing absolutely amazing people and i just want to all you subscribers you know guys like uh ruben uh discupolo uh you know so many of you guys um early Duna bird Dean, early bird gp30 we love you guys man you guys are like our family and uh just thank you guys so much for supporting us so we but, have a few fun questions we like to ask before we wrap so, up yeah so here's sure. one sure. so obviously the name of your show is countdown the classic so what happens when we get classic? Is it going to be countdown to TBC or uh, what? This question comes up way more often than I, when I named the show, I never even thought about this. <laughs> um, but to be honest with you, once classic drops, the, I've, I've told a few listeners this, the show's title will not change. Okay. It will remain countdown to classic. 
I still think it's uh, you know you you kind of you've got a name, people recognize it. I, I don't think there's any major drama, even though it, it seems like a bit of a superfluous name at that point. Once it's been released, it, it's all good. But I mean, yeah, whether you talk about <laughs> Countdown to the Burning Crusade uh, classic. <laughs> Uh, that's a bit of a mouthful, but um, yeah. <laughs> no, it, it's, yeah, I'm happy with staying as it is. So Josh, of course you have been interviewing many people show, but what is it like being, being the interviewee? It's, it's nerve wracking. I'm not going <laughs> to lie. And actually I'm glad that, that we did this because it's given me a really big appreciation for what it's like to be on the hot seat yourself. <laughs> and don't get me wrong. I can talk for days and days and, and sort of, Coming up with an answer for thing is, is, things isn't terribly hard for me, but you do catch yourself just in moments of, of being nervous. And I ask so many questions of so, of so many people about really specific things, and my questions can get pretty specific that puts people on the spot. And I've always been amazed at how well, and this is, again, the Warcraft community and how incredibly intelligent the majority of us are. There's so many people out there who give these amazing answers and I just take it for granted. And now I'm sitting here going like, like sweating, you know, <laughs> it's tough. It's tough. It's interesting, but I'm enjoying it. No, it's good fun. Well, you give amazing answers too. It's any consolation, but uh, yeah, I mean, it really is sometimes, especially when you're, you're saying something, you're like, shit, should I have said that? Maybe I shouldn't have said that. Or you know what? I forgot to say this or shit. I just totally took that question. There's a couple of questions I think that you asked me that I, at the end of it, I was like, did I even answer the question? I think I just, I just talked in circles, but you know, that's how, that's how it is sometimes. The best part about talking in circles. And again, this is what I do as a daily exercise through work is sometimes I'm up, you know, speaking for 30 to 45 minutes without a break in front of a judge mm. and you talk and talk and you can hear yourself, your inner voice going, you're rambling, you're <laughs> rambling. Like, and you have to yep. literally talk yourself around that lap and it comes full circle where you eventually do get back on point. But yes, I can hear myself going, there's a good 20 seconds there where I was talking complete <laughs> shit. Josh, that, uh, that happens to me all the time. Too, too much, too much. As <laughs> many of you guys probably know, <laughs> but, um, it's something I'm working on. It's something I'm working on. I, my, the way my brain works sometimes is like, I feel like my mouth is moving before my brain, you know? Does anybody it does, else... guys. It definitely does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dev camps, I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Screw you, Phil. No, it's, it's been great. It's been great fun being the interviewee. <laughs> okay, so okay, you're, a, you're a, a cinephile, and you have a podcast called The Sinner Files. I'm guessing it's a play on words, I'm guessing. Um, mm -hmm. Yep. So uh, what would you think about the Warcraft movie? What was your review? I loved it. So yeah, we, we covered it um, on the Cinephiles and Countdown to Classic. And yes, it is a play on words, the S-I-N-N-E-R. It's, you know, we're so smart, we're crafty. But, um, we basically decided that after I started Countdown to Classic, we were loving doing the, the movie show. And we thought, how can we kind of marry these two audiences up? Like, can we do something for the Warcraft crowd that they get a kick out of? And we said, well, obviously we'll do the Warcraft movie. And I didn't like the Warcraft movie when it when I first saw it and I'd only seen it once when I covered it for the show and what we do for every Cinephiles episode is we re-watch all the movies to keep it fresh in our minds and then we comment on it the second time I saw it which was for the Cinephiles episode I really liked it and I re I came around massively on the Warcraft movie and that the, my two co-hosts on the Cinephiles said the exact same thing they were like maybe it was something about being in a, a large cinema um, that weirdly didn't work for the Warcraft movie because sitting at home on my big screen here, just um, being by myself, it worked really well within a TV home theater environment. And um, I just appreciate, I mean, maybe you could argue that obviously given what I've been doing on Countdown to Classic, I've grown a bit more of an appreciation for the lore and stuff like that. But outside of that, just the technical proficiency of the movie I thought was amazing. The, the CG work that, that Duncan Jones put together was, was oh, well, obviously he didn't do it, but he directed yeah. it. Amazing. The one complaint I'll always have about the Warcraft movie is still the, the acting. The, the humans mm -hmm. and the acting is really at times quite poor. I agree, um, yeah. And there are some very good actors in that movie doing bizarrely horrible work. Yeah. Um, I, I don't like Ben Foster's work in it, even mm -hmm. though I like Ben Foster as an actor. Um, you know, it, it's uh, Paula. God, I've forgotten her surname. I think it starts with a P again. The woman who played Garona. Uh, Paula uh, Patton, I think. 
Yes, I think Paul she's, Patton. Yeah, she's hot. Excellent in other stuff. I don't think she's good in Warcraft. No, um, it's it's an odd one. But everything we're like the weirdly the best acting is done by the orcs. Yes. And those scenes between Juritan and Orgrim are they're touching. Oh, they're I absolutely touching. Them, yeah. Um, and, and also, obviously, with uh, Draka and everything, I love. Give me a fully CG Warcraft movie, and I'm happy. Yes, and, I know, and right? The one thing that everyone cries out for um, that I completely appreciate, and I've read from from Blizzard staff why they could never do, just given the time and money that would be involved. Although it's been done before by other companies, mm -hmm. um, a feature length uh, cutscene movie, you know, something like the BFA trailer. Yeah. Of course, everyone wants an hour and a half of that. Mm -hmm. But it's oh, not yeah. feasible, given that Blizzard doesn't really have a department that they could put away and devote that much time and money right, to. Right. But obviously, you've had someone like Square do it with Final Fantasy before, yeah. so who knows? Yeah. yeah, was it the Advent Children? Is that what you're talking about? Like, stuff like that? Uh, they did it with the Spirits Within, and then Advent Children as well. Oh, right, that's right. So, um, I, I, I think you made this point in that episode. Maybe you didn't. Uh, it, 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 does it get better for you the more you watch it, the Warcraft movie? It does, and and I plan on on honestly revisiting it more and more in the future. Yeah. Um, it's something that, and look, there are movies like this. They're they're like wine. It's an acquired taste. You know, yeah. I hated I hated my first glass of wine. Now I drink it like a fish. Yeah, um, same here. You know, it's uh, it's something that I think with each repeated viewing, you start to see little things that make you enjoy it more. And obviously, the more time you spend with the game, um, mm -hmm. as we're always adding to that slash, you know, play time. Yeah. Um, the more you experience, you appreciate Warcraft as a whole, and the more you can appreciate this movie. But we really loved talking about it on the show. We had a lot of laughs with it. I had someone contact me just last night or the night before saying, "Hey, I just listened to that Warcraft movie episode. I thought you were <laughs> going to be slamming it, but you guys were just laughing along with it." And that's the whole point of the show. We're not we're not negative, pessimistic critics here who turn our noses up at every movie under the sun. We watch them and we just want to laugh with them. And like I said, That's the two awesome. guys that I do it with, they're they're borderline comedians and they're very very fun to talk to. That's really cool. So, all right, so <clears throat> I'm a cinephile as well. Uh, I love movies. I go to the cinema probably I don't know once a month, maybe twice a month. Um, yeah. To the cinema, yeah. I'm sorry, but <laughs> so what's your favorite movie? Top two. Give us your top two. Yeah, we talked about this recently. Said so it's funny. I, I don't have a top three, but I have a top two. So my number one movie of all time. We covered this on the show. Is Inception. I'm one of those guys. I'm sorry. I know that <laughs> people who list Inception as their favorite movie get a lot of shit for it. Going, oh, you're one of those people. All right. <laughs> you think you think you're deep. You think you're smart because it's you know Inception and Chris Nolan doing dreams within dreams. But um, it's uh, more I than enjoyed it. Sorry. It's more than the high con. No, no, no it's, it's a good. I think a lot of people enjoyed it, but uh, I don't actually. I haven't met many people that said they flat out hated it. But it's more than just the high concept. It's actually the technical proficiency again of Nolan, who's my favorite filmmaker. Mm. Um, I think he's just, you know, the way in which he presents his sets, the the way in which he gives direction and everything. It's I, I'm a sucker for an action movie. It's got a lot of action yep. and it's high concept. It's right up my alley. My number two of all time, which was number one before Inception came along, is Pulp Fiction, which I also covered. Pulp Fiction. I thought you were, were going to say The Matrix, uh, but yeah. No, I don't know. Yeah, but Pulp Fiction uh, is Pulp Fiction incredible. Is Tarantino is a, he's a genius. Um, oh, he's 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 an absolute genius. And one of the things I said on the show about Pulp Fiction is Tarantino is incredibly underrated in terms of his script writing. His dialogue is machine gun fire yes. of intelligence, and I love it. Absolutely, um, that's yeah. So I, I, that's really cool. So I, I um, wh so what's your favorite movie of twenty eighteen so far? You've seen just to throw another one out there. Um, what have I said? I mean, we, we luckily enough with the, um, the show, we now get thrown a few, a few uh, free tickets. Like technically, I guess maybe we could say we're members of the press for the movies. I don't know if we get free yeah. tickets from the movie companies. That's all good, but um, it's it's been a tough one. I haven't had much scream out to me this year um you know solo came along and it was a big yeah. disappointment it was okay um it, it was it was fine i i, I god there's a weird stuff going on with star wars fans at the moment i'm a really big star wars fan but yeah, yeah. Um, people yeah. are getting nasty about star wars now and saying some really weird stuff about kathleen kennedy and things like that but solo was fine it wasn't great it was just it was fine it wasn't bad i thought um, it was i, I personally I, I thought it was better than the two canon um 
new canon movies. I thought movies. Rogue One was great. Really? Yeah. I don't like the new canon okay. movies. Yeah, I'm one of those guys. Oh. I I think it totally deviated from what Star Wars is. Uh, that's just my personal opinion. But I, we can get into that. <laughs> A whole other podcast about yeah. that. But I, sure. I thought Solo and Rogue One were um, better than the, uh, what, what do you want to call them? Seven, seven and eight. Yeah. 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 Personally. Th- but Hereditary was excellent. I'm not sure if you got a chance to see that. I'm um, busting to see it. Everyone tells me not to find out anything about it. Just go and see it. No, absolutely. Just else. go and see it. And then there was. Um, Which one was that? Which one was Heredity? A horror movie. That's it, a horror movie. Oh, I, I want to say yeah, something. Yeah, yeah. I think it's the best movie since The Shining and The Exorcist. Best horror movie. Best horror movie wow. since The Shining and The Exorcist. Yeah. Because The Shining is like one of my top. I'm not favorite. saying it's better than The Shining. I'm just saying that it is okay. in that yeah. caliber. I would say. Yeah. Heredity. Hereditary. 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 Okay. Hereditary. Yeah. yeah, it's hereditary. Yeah. So, so um, anyway, but that's we just wanted to do some movie stuff before we uh, sit. No, no, oh. I, I, I can talk movies to the cows. I know. Home, so I <laughs> Dude, I had a great time with you tonight. Josh. Yeah. So, uh, Josh, plug away before we say goodbye. Yes. Where yeah. can we check out Count on the Classic and whatever else you are doing? Where can we go and check it out? I appreciate it, guys. So, uh, everyone watching, if you haven't heard of yet. Please visit countdowntoclassic.com. The podcast comes out three times per week. I try to stick to that schedule as tightly as possible. Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, generally before lunchtime, Eastern Standard Time, you'll see an episode pop up. Occasionally now, as I say, I'm trying to get my personal life come to the forefront a bit more. They might be a day late or so, but they still come three times a week. So rest assured that you'll get your content. You can also find me, uh, I stream occasionally, uh, Countdown to Classic on Twitch. You can find me on Twitter at Counts2Classic. The Cinephiles as well, if you love movies, I can't recommend that podcast more. And that's at um, cinephiles.com, S-I-N-N-E-R-F-I-L-E-S.com. That's, to be honest with you, I, I love that show equally as much as Countdown to Classic. Um, it's very, I, I'm, I hate saying it's funny, but it's not me that's funny. It's the other two. So <laughs> if you like a laugh and you like movies, check it out. And and that's it. If you love Warcraft, check out Countdown to Classic. Yes. Guys, and all yeah. the links, all of Josh's stuff is below his picture right now. You'll see it on the screen. And there'll be clickable links in the description if you want to click a link. So, Guys, I have to say, if you have not checked out Countdown to Classic, it is by far the best WoW podcast on the game. It, it, there is nothing better. Josh does an amazing job, guys. Go to countdowntoclassic.com. Give it a listen while you're driving, while you're just chilling. Give I do it, it at listen, the gym. Guys. It's great at the gym. It is amazing. I am talking out of this world. He does an amazing job. Josh, you're an amazing guy. I mean, you really inspire Meldron and I. Um to to just strive to be better and and i gotta say everything we've done with you man we've had a great time you're an all-around just great man i know you don't like to get people giving you compliments and all but you deserve a million of them seriously you're an awesome guy and we love you here i appreciate it guys thanks so much and and you said uh just briefly on you guys you said um that, you know you're, you're striving to improve as well and as i've told you guys this privately i won't go into what i said to you privately but um you say you're striving for improvement and i can assure you that you guys are clearly getting better and better and to the point that i think your content is some of my favorite content now out there on youtube and um your growth has become so evident and and keep doing what you're doing because i ride the bus home from work and I tune into Death Camp and Melder on TV, and I enjoy it thoroughly. So thank you, and keep Thanks it up. Thanks so much. Thanks, man. Josh. That means a lot to us. And a little bit of housekeeping. Guys, if you want to be on Def Talk, we don't care who you are. We don't care if you've never made a video before in your life. Uh, Melderon.gaming at gmail.com. Also, in the comments, let us know how this was. I mean, I'm, I'm, it was it was excellent, of course, but let us know um, anybody you would like us to get on the show. Um, we don't really care about high profile versus not high profile. If you know a friend of yours wants to be on the show, put it in the Tell us to contact us um, in any way possible. So, Guys, until next time, this is Def Camp. And Melderon and... And Josh. Guys, we love you. Keep on key binding and grinding, baby. Peace. See you guys later. Peace. Later. See you all.